Oh my god. Uh, you can't just show up wherever you want just because it's for a video. I'm literally in my nightgown. Do you, it's gonna be really bad one of these days when you just I show. literally texted it to you and you read it. I you told didn't. you. I did. I told you that I was going to be You're showing up. You're literally lying for- f I No, I'm not. Didn't. I'm literally not lying. I sent it to you saying that I was going to have to come soon and you just left me on red. You didn't even say anything. F fine. Fine. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Fine. I guess it's te technically my fault anyways. Whatever. Whatever. Oh, the entire video, I pronounced one of the victim's names Diane Ruiz, when her name is actually Diane Ruiz. So keep that in mind, please. I'm a fucking idiot. Um, oh, and of course, we can't forget the feature of all the videos all the time. Uh, the content warnings. Kidnapping. Abuse. All kinds of assault and the details of it, but not the details of the sexual assault, don't worry. Murder and the details of it. Mentions of rape and sexualization of real life murders and rapists. This is quite a serious video, but I'm going to pretend like it isn't because I'm going to bed. You hear that? I'm going to bed. You know, we really have to work something out because one day you're going to show up. You're going to show up and I'm going to be like naked or something. So it's going to be awful. Mm, are you sure about that? I think it'll be all the better. Judas! <laughs> you're right, though. Uh, uh, enjoy the video if you can. Hey guys, welcome to Purgatory. Purgatory. I have talked about how harmful book talk and the woman on there are several times. I have several videos on it and I might even talk about it more in person. But today we'll be covering a very real example of how dangerous book talk and the woman on there are. If you've been on the internet the past while, you've probably seen the name Wade Wilson floating around. And no, I'm not talking about Deadpool, even though I am known to be a big fan of him. The internet quickly became infatuated with this man and would mostly drool over his looks. From Twitter to TikTok, women specifically were going absolutely feral, meow meow, woof woof over this man, making edits, calling him daddy type shit. Wait. Surely that's not. Computer in hands. Surely that's, that's not what I think it is. Yep, that's a spectacle. Wade Wilson is a white supremacist, but that's not it. I'm not starting at the heart of the drama though. Let's go all the way back and go over his history real quick. Disclaimer, a lot of the details on these cases are hard to find and quite blurry. So if something is not 100% accurate, it is not intentional. I'm going off what information we have been given. If you wanna skip this part, you can go to this time or check the timestamps in the description. Oh, and also I have to censor several words so that I don't get demonetized because YouTube is going insane with censoring. So just by the way, when I say the word corn, take out the C, replace it with a P. And when it goes quiet during this section, I am saying this, replace the star with a G. Once again, I am so sorry that I have to do something as childish as this, but it's better to speak and censor things than to not speak at all. Anyway. On May 20th, 1994, Wade Wilson was born to two underage parents. Stephen Testaseca, who was 14 or 15 at the time, and a mother who was about a year younger. I don't know her identity and I will not be digging to do so. Said parents gave him up for adoption, seemingly because of how young they were. In 2012, he reached out to his biological father, Stephen, when he was 18, to seemingly form a relationship with him. At some point, he became addicted to certain drugs, probably because he was given away by his parents to the adoption system, and we're not entirely sure as of when, but we think it's when he was young. In 2015, Wade was arrested for sexual battery and kidnapping, after a woman told investigators that Wade raped her after they met at a party. According to court records, the woman said she and Wilson went to his car to smoke pot before he abruptly turned violent. She said he ordered her to get in the back seat, choked her with both hands around her neck, and repeatedly threatened to shoot her if she didn't obey his commands. The victim stated after being choked and threatened with a gun, she became extremely scared and feared for her life. The victim said she went into survival mode and began doing whatever Wilson asked and tried her best not to make him mad. Wade denied doing so, and just like that, he was free. In 2018, around three years later, there was the trial of Denise Williams, a woman who was thought to have conspired to kill her husband, Mike Williams, with her lover, Brian Winchester, and make it look like a boating accident. It was okay, we were forgiven, he explained. We were like David and Bathsheba because God was going to forgive us, Brian Winchester said. In 2016, two years back, however, Brian met Wade in jail after kidnapping Denise and tried to get Wade to fabricate evidence against her where Wade offered to kill her. Wade brought up he was a hitman, I didn't believe him, he said. He did offer to make Denise go away and make other witnesses go away and I told him don't speak to me about that again. Denise was sentenced to 30 years in prison and Brian was sentenced for 20, but only for charges of kidnapping and aggravated assault because they had made a deal that if he read it out to Denise, then he would be granted immunity in his crimes of shooting Mike in the head. 
on February 19th, 2019, an ex-girlfriend of Wade told the police that she was arguing with Wade over him going to rehab, and he agreed, but they needed to make a stop on the way. On the way, Wade, who was driving, got angry, and after more arguing, he began to choke her with both hands, hit her several times, and used a knife to cut off her t-shirt and bra to blindfold her before he drove around for two hours and ended up stolen her phone. He then tied her hands and feet, tried to put a garbage bag over her head, punched her when it didn't work, and then apologized and let her free to use the bathroom. Then he drove to a gas station where he got into a different car and left. There's not a lot of coverage on the situation, so the details are kind of blurry, but it seems that she was asked not to contact Wade until Wade was spoken to. Once Wade was brought in, he claimed that he and the woman were driving when he met another woman at a gas station. He headed towards her car, and the now ex-girlfriend begged him to come back, never mentioning any of the abuse, and that the now ex-girlfriend threatened to harm both of them if he didn't come back. After interviewing everyone, Potter said, there were no witnesses to the alleged crime and no evidence to establish probable cause. It seems she also might have reported that he also raped her, but they decided not to pursue any investigations into that. Actually, quote, but Wilson and his former girlfriend were under a no-contact court order and investigators opted not to pursue the rape and kidnapping allegations. Six months later, in September 2019, Wade apparently pled guilty to selling her phone and was given credit for time served and probation, meaning he was completely set free. Another woman also accused him of rape and kidnapping, but then decided not to seek charges. October 7th, 2019, the very next month, Wade Wilson meets Christine Melton and her friend Stephanie Sailors at a bar. They eventually ended up going to Christine's house, and after her friend left, Wade strangled Christine to death in her sleep. He rolled her up and was originally going to put her in the trunk and dump her body, but rigor mortis started setting in, so he couldn't lift her. So he left her there and stole her car instead. He drove to his girlfriend's house, Melissa Montanez, and after she wouldn't willingly get in the car, he tried to force her, but she resisted and then fled. I resisted, got plank style so that he could not grab me into the vehicle. When you say you got plank style, could you just show the jurors what you meant? What do you mean by that? And I was being pulled into the car by my dress. Okay, so for the record, you just stood up and put your hands straight above your head. Yes, so that I was not being able to be budged into the vehicle. A blurry short amount of time later, he was driving when he saw Diane Ruiz walking to work when he decided to trick her by pretending to ask for directions and then lure her into the car. She apparently got into the car to give said directions when Wade decided to strangle her when she tried to leave. He continuously strangled her while driving around looking for a place to dump her body before she was even dead. He strangled her into unconsciousness, but when he realized that she was still breathing, he drove over her so many times that she looked like spaghetti. He said he got back in the car and ran her over until she looked like spaghetti. As he's telling you all these things, what's his demeanor as he's telling you? He was excited. When you say excited, what do you mean by that? He just, I felt like he was wanting me to feel the way he felt about it. Did he seem proud of it? Yes. Did he seem to show any kind of remorse? No, oh, ma'am. And was he able to go into great detail about both of these ladies' deaths? Yes, ma'am. He then called his father, Stephen, while he was at work and told him that he needed help because he did something that can't be taken back involving his girlfriend. Stephen told him to call back around dinner time because he was at work and couldn't really help. In between that time, Stephen gets a call from a detective who tells him that if Wade gets back in contact with him, to call them because they need to speak with him. He then called Stephen again around 10 p.m. and went into detail about the crimes that he committed. Despite initial hesitation to give his son away, Stephen said that that feeling changed, so he gave his son's location away to the police after telling his son that he would call him an Uber because he thought, You know, what if that was my mom or my daughter or sister or wife? I wouldn't want somebody to do that. He stayed on the phone with his son until the police took him away, and Wade Wilson did not resist arrest and fully confessed to both murders. Christine was a cat lover and lived four houses down from her mother so that she could keep her safe from scammers attempting to take advantage of her amid her battle with dementia. Her and her brother were stressing trying to figure out how to get their mother to stop buying scams. Her brother Robert calls his sister the glue that kept me connected to the cousins living in Florida, which he admits to not doing a good job at keeping in touch with them with Christine out of the picture. A friend of mine sent me a link like, oh yeah, he's a TikTok sensation, and I'm just like, oh my god, I don't want anything in this to be about him, Robert Melton added. Two wonderful people died. This should not end up being about Wade. Since learning of her daughter's death, Christine's mother, who has dementia, has rapidly started to decline. Diane Ruiz's body was found behind a Sam's Club three days after her murder. She never missed a day of work in her five years as a bartender. Diane was the heartbeat of the bar, her co-worker added. She just had that personality that was really magnifying. She has this really loud laugh that you could hear it like a mile away. She has two sons, Brandon, 29, and Zane, 19. 
She was murdered days before Zane's debut into the high school marching band. I never got to see her in the crowd, Romero added. My mom will never get to see me get married. She, uh... She, uh... She didn't think I'd give her a kiss goodbye. Had you? Of course. Also back to the white supremacy thing, other than the obvious, the swastikas on his face, he is also thought to be connected to the white supremacist gang called the Unforgiven, the largest white supremacist gang in the state of Florida. So yeah, that is the same man that we were talking about at the start of the video. You may wonder why people say book talk or book talk women specifically, when the women who are wet over this man are so large that they come from all over, unfortunately. But that's because there is a link between women who enjoy dark romance and women who enjoy true crime. Both are dangerous, so together they are terrifying. When you're interested in things like this, the dark, the taboo, the twisted, you need to ask yourself why that is and if it's safe to continue doing so for everyone around. To ask and figure things out. The thing is, honestly, most people usually women specifically, who are into dark romance and true crime, don't have the empathy that they think they do. And most people won't understand that they're not actually open-minded because they've already convinced themselves that they are. You can say don't demonize a dark romance genre as a whole, but I will. Because it puts harmful content out into the world where people will digest it and change because of it, whether you want to believe it or not. If you're into it because of trauma and you're using that as some kind of harm reduction or something, that would mean that you're getting help while using this as harm reduction because you understand that it's bad and that's why you need help. And those people shouldn't be demonized, but I think that dark romance should. Because there's also the fact that it's called dark romance when the dark romance in question is usually just abuse. And I say usually just in case because I haven't read every dark romance thing ever, but there's a reason why it's called dark romance. We know what dark usually means. I had this realization while in the middle of explaining something in another video. Women are raised up as girls to believe that when boys hurt you, it's because they like you. And that you should not only accept this, but be fond of it. He's pushing you, pinching you, pulling your hair because he likes you. And as you grow up, there's no one to tell you that that's bad. Schools let boys sexually harass and assault girls with no consequence. Snapping their bra straps, slapping their ass and bullying them. And this keeps going until one day she stays with a man like this as a woman. And now everyone's telling her that it's her fault. He hit you because you made him mad. Why would you do that? If you wouldn't have upset him, he wouldn't have hit you. He screamed at you? You must be nagging at him and he's had enough. You're a bad wife. You're a bad partner. If you'd just done as you were told, like a good wife, like a good girlfriend, then you wouldn't have been hit. And even if they are eventually told that what's happening to them isn't right, how many years now has she been thinking that this is okay behavior? And these girls grow into women who enjoy things like enemies to lovers and fiction because that's basically what they've been living their whole lives. He's bullying you, that means he likes you. You should give him a chance because you're a bitch if you don't. And that applies to dark romance too, but with even more nuance. With how accessible corn is to the entire public, you are one Google search away from seeing a male dominated sexual world. Rape is seen as something that happens because of sexual desire, but that's actually incorrect. It is not because of a sexual desire. It is because of a desire for power. To rape someone is to take away, to have power over, to take control of, to force upon, to be stronger than, to take what you want and leave them weak. All it is is a power trip. And what do men love more than anything? Power over women. I really don't think I have to break this to you because I think we all know this by now, but the large majority of men see women as lesser in some way. Mostly cis men, but sometimes. What do men who see women as lesser than them want to have power over them do when they have the opportunity to create a website doing so? They create corn. Thousands of female corn stars have talked about how heavily they were abused sexually, physically, mentally, financially. Paid nothing, abused, drugged, rich, tossed away. They do whatever they want to these women and the women put up with it because if they don't, they don't get the money. That tiny bit of money that they actually get. Despite being the whole reason that everyone's there, right? The things that they go through are not normal or healthy, but we've been exposed to it since being children. I was exposed to around eight or younger. That's around 2008. Think about kids now. With the popularity of Twitter and how corn dominated it is now, and it rots the brain. Did you know that I didn't realize that the sexual treatment like that in corn was harmful and abnormal until I was around 17 or 18? Guess how much harm happened to me in that amount of time? When you're a minor, that is when your brain is growing the most. Those are the most formable years of your life. Learning through corn in that stage is one of the most dangerous things on this globe. Misogyny permeates the industry. It is the industry. And learning through that is learning misogyny. It's learning that sex is misogyny. So now you're a grown woman who grew up seeing misogynistic corn as sex and being abused by boys at school and just the boys around you. Of course you're going to like misogynistic sex. That's what you were tricked to believe, tricked to want. That's what they want. If they convince you to like it, they can do it and not get in trouble. 
So no, you liking it does not mean that it's harmless or okay. Abuse will always be abuse, no matter what you call it. And even Billie Eilish has talked about it. As a woman, I think it's a disgrace. And I used to watch a lot of to be honest. I started watching when I was like 11. I thought that's how you learn how to have sex. I was watching um, abusive porn, to be honest. You know, when I was like 14. And mm. I, you know, thought I was one of the guys and would talk about it and think it was really cool for, for, for not having a problem with it and not seeing why it was bad. And I think it really destroyed my brain. And um, I feel incredibly devastated that I was exposed to so much. I think that I had like sleep paralysis and these like almost like night terror slash just nightmares because of it. I think that's how they started because I would just watch abusive BDSM. I couldn't watch anything else like, unless it was violent. I like, didn't think it was attractive. And I was a virgin. I, I'd never done anything. And, and so I, I, it, it led to problems where, you know, the first, the first few times I, you know, had sex, I was not saying no to things that were not good. And it's because I thought that that's what I was supposed to be attracted to. And I just, I am, I'm so angry that porn is so loved the, the way that like vaginas looking is fucking crazy no vaginas look like that women's bodies don't look like that we don't come like that we don't fucking enjoy things that are what it looks like people are enjoying and it's how so many people think that they're supposed to learn it's how so many men think that they're supposed to be and because in porn there's no consent uh, like getting thrown around during sex you're not interested in being slapped and being choked people are like you're vanilla you're soft you're, that's not you're boring but and i'm not talking about me i'm talking about women women are like oh i have to like being hurt to be thought of as good in bed Gen Z and Gen Alpha are and will be the generations most exposed to corn, and it is and will ruin our brains. But sex isn't the issue here. Corn is. Watching people have sex isn't bad. Sex work isn't bad. Sex isn't bad. Corn is. Because of its roots and misogyny. Giselle Pellicott, whose husband drugged her and allowed different men to rape her over the course of 10 years, is holding a public trial and allowing her name to be published even though she didn't have to. Her husband wished for a private trial which would have allowed their names to remain anonymous, but she wanted to shame the men who have raped her and hold them responsible publicly for what they have done. She told the court that she hopes her testimony might help spare other women from similar ordeals. She said she pushed for the trial in open court in solidarity with other women who go unrecognized as victims of sexual crimes. Hub is deleting videos with sleep and sleeping in the title, and now sends a warning message about how the content is illegal and non-consensual when people search for sleeping videos. You are groomed from birth to be what they want. So yeah, of course you have a BDSM kink where you're the submissive being thrown around by the man. But he still loves you, because imagine going through all of that and he doesn't love you. Now that would be bad. You are going to be a good, submissive, agreeable wife the second that they find out that your fetus is female. Don't be fooled into thinking that the same amount of women would be into this sort of extreme BDSM and abuse if it was introduced to us in a completely fair and misogynistic free world. Before you even try to come at me with the whole BDSM shaming, kink shaming, a stupid thing, I'm literally in the BDSM community. So yeah, it makes sense why the woman who drool overweight exists. It really does. Especially when you consider the excuse that they give uh, for things that they enjoy in fiction. It's just fiction, it's not real. As well as how we see celebrities and those larger than us as fictional. We treat celebrities as characters or gods, as if they're not the same as the homeless dude across the street from your local Walmart. Of course they're going to sexualize him. Well, that's already what they do in book form. Now they're just doing it in TV form. If those women that he murdered were their friend, mother, sister, and they had met him previously as their partner, their boyfriend, do you really think they'd be acting the same? Why do we think that books doing the exact same thing, but in writing version, would be any different? There is a reason why they're doing what they're doing. And you know what? There's also a reason why Wade Wilson became the person who murders and rapes women. There's a reason for everything everyone does at all times. Where do we draw the line? Scrolling under Wade's tag will give you everything from thirst comments to edits of him in court. Please give him a chance to reintegrate into the community. Yes, sir. Has he done everything you've asked him to do for us? Yes, sir. Do you think this pleasing your best Wilson Films. He's so fine in the new clips. The new clips of him in court for murdering two women for fun. Him and that dimple is just, save Wade Wilson. You know what you're doing every time. I can't stop looking at him. I know he's too perfect. He's serving. No, honey, I think he's serving life. God, I know you're good to us all. Right now, please save him, Wade Wilson. The criminal is always true. The victim is liars. Always that, why are you victim? Save my criminal man. Oh, so close. He actually admitted to it. Because he was set up and threatened. Stop talking when you know nothing about the case. Oh, by the way, did I mention the people shipping him with his lawyer?
Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn and Joker. Joker and Harley Quinn. Why does give off Joker meeting Harley Quinn before she turned crazy? <laughs> I bet on losing dogs. I bet Mitski would agree with this post so hard. Wade Wilson, save his life, please. Thank you, innocent. Even if he did hella bad crimes, he didn't deserve the death sentence. <laughs> Why is this giving me Harley Quinn Joker vibes? Harley Quinn for sure. Harley Quinn and the Joker. Is she his Harley Quinn? Maybe she's a little bit falling in love with him. So yeah. The fact that they're being compared to Harley and the Joker, whose extremely abusive relationship of the Joker abusing Harley in several different ways has been romanticized and sexualized for the past several years, I think just about completely proves everything that I've said this entire time absolutely correct. But anyways, they say that history repeats itself, that if you don't learn from past history, that it'll just keep happening until you learn from it and change. And I think that makes a lot of sense considering what happened with Ted Bundy. He was attractive. Women wanted him. He was charming. He was pretty. And he used that to his advantage to kill people. And women did the same thing that they're doing now, back then and recently when his movie came out. Cause we never learned. And we won't learn from this one either or the next one. And it'll happen again and again. And then one more time and then time after that. And then again, I wonder if change actually ever happens or if it just feels like it does. With how predictable everything is now because of our knowledge of past history of how we've never really changed doing anything and how we're still doing the same thing now. I wonder if it really is possible for things to ever change. If true change actually does ever happen and if it can even happen now. Wade Wilson has reportedly received over 100 explicit photos after being arrested. 100 sexual pictures from women who knew that he strangled women to death with his bare hands, that he drove over women for no reason other than the joy of it. Sent sexual photos to the man who killed her daughter, his mother before she got to see him in the school marching band. I grew up everywhere with my mom just to have her be stripped away on a random weekday. And women only truly matter when they're part of a man, right? When they're part of someone else, right? Because it's always, she was someone's child. She was someone's daughter. She was someone's wife. She was just someone. But no, they had to belong to someone else to matter. So no, I'm not surprised that the craze for him extends to thirst comments, edits of him in court, using him to promote your book. Oh. Yeah, that happened. Cassie Ruffle posted a video saying, if you like him, showing Wade Wilson, you will love this. Enemies to a version of lovers. Electricity play. Criminal love story. Forbidden romance. Rough upbringing. Head guard. Death row inmate. Murder mystery. Needle play. If you like the idea of spicy criminals, Shocking Revelations is a dark romance novel about a death row inmate having an electric relationship with the prison guard. Cassie is an author who seems to primarily write dark romance. And she's also a mother, by the way. With that in mind, let's take a look at what she had to say after people found her post and reasonably lost their minds. Many are infatuated with him as well as his whole case. Those are the ones who this video is made for. Thank you for sharing your thoughts on it. I really don't get why it's a problem to market a true crime and death row book with a real true crime and death row case. My book is worse than his crimes. Maybe go after the true crime fans who obsess over unalivers as much as I do. Did we mean to say the last part out loud? If you don't like my marketing techniques, then I don't think my books are for you. Thank you for your support. My favorite singer taught me to ignore the haters. My job is not to love everyone or be loved by everyone. Have a good day. Do I realize there are millions of unalivers who are famous and get whole fan fiction written about them? Yes, I cannot cater to everyone. Many dislike it, but this is what I write. I write dark, dark, dark. Writing is my therapy. Do I support them? No. Did I ever say I did? 
No. If you don't like the darkness of my books, then they are not for you. If you don't agree with my posts, you are not my target audience. Haters be gone. Do I have an obsession with dark men who could unalive anyone? Yes. My goal was to get people who like the stories and like to read about them to read my book. Clearly everyone misunderstood. I wrote, do you like him? What I mean is, do you like serial killer books? Do you like true crime? Do you like their stories? We are all stories in the end. We are all human. I know it's hard to believe, but not everyone likes the same types of books. The book is in no way about him. It was published before he was even a thing. I only used him because he's relevant and recent. Because there are people interested in his case. His case is horrible, obviously, or he wouldn't have been on death row. Many people enjoy hearing about people like him, and that's why I used him to market as well. I literally don't know how else I can say this. I'm not trying to make anyone upset or anything. I literally am just appealing to a certain audience, and most people don't fall under that audience. My books are a dark romance because they are dark and a romance. There are books worse than mine. If many took the time to look, I also have a list of trigger warnings before you even get to the book. I literally am just a person who made that post that people didn't care for. This happens every day. I did remove the post, as I've said. Clearly everyone misunderstood because I wrote, do you like him? And what I mean is, do you like serial killer books? Do you like true crime? Do you like their stories? The stories of killers who killed people's daughters, sons, friends, family, people's people, people who killed people who took away their lives because they wanted to or for whatever reason. The fact that before you said all of that, you said, do I have an obsession with dark men who could kill anyone? Yes. I am so genuinely actually scared and worried for your children. Why do you like men who can kill anyone? Whoa. I only used him because he's relevant and recent because there are people interested in his case. Many people enjoy learning about people like him and that's why I used him to market. So you still used a real life serial killer, a real life killer of people to market your book, to get you money on your book, talking about serial killers. Can you imagine if the families of the victims came across that, you think that's okay for them to see? And if your response to that would be, well, my books just aren't for everyone, my books just aren't for them, you've lost the point of the plot, my friend. Also, when they said my favorite singer taught me to ignore the haters, she meant Ronnie Radke. So, um, yeah, there's that. Do I support them? No. Did I ever say that I did? No. If you don't like the darkness of my books, then they're not for you. You're not my target audience. Haters be gone. Haters. This is what I've been talking about. When anyone has any criticism now on anyone's art or anything anyone does, you are now a hater rather than just being like, hey, I'm getting a lot of hate. Let me think about why. It's so much easier to just say, well, they're just a hater and not have to think about the consequences of your actions. This is just a way of coping. If you don't like the darkness of my books, they're just not for you. I like super, super dark things. I write super, super dark. It's not for everyone. It, it, it's, it's dark. It's crazy. Maybe you should think about why you like these things, especially now that you have children you're going to influence. You're a horrible person. I hope you die rotten hell. How are words like this better than anything? What does that even mean? You're all too zombified to realize that many people have an obsession with unalivers and it's nothing bad. The stories are interesting. 13 out of many, both big and small, achievements, all 13 of these achievements. My mom didn't get the chance to see me accomplish. My mother will never get the chance to see me get married, get to see me graduate college as a first generation graduate, get to see me get my first real job. During college, I was sent to the ER for the first time. I got into my first car accident and the only person I wanted to call was my mom or how she went missing. I trusted my gut so much. Everything told me that she was coming home and I haven't been able to trust her again. Or how when I was told she was missing while walking home from my bus stop or how everybody in my town knew that she was dead before me or how on my 15th birthday I almost killed myself because I couldn't bear the idea without turning 15 without my mom. I lived five years without her and not a single day has gone by where I haven't been able to not think about her. My mother only loved 
only had love in her heart, only wanted the best for me, and nothing that happened to her was ever deserved, and she just wanted to live a normal life. She, uh... She, she didn't think I'd give her a kiss goodbye. And then I'm also going to have you look quickly at 13. Do you recognize that? Yes. And, and is that after she had passed? Yes. And a permission. I, first of all, the state would move 10E and 13 into evidence. To be admitted. Permission to publish? You may. Judge, I would ask that uh, 13 be passed around um, to the jurors okay. rather than display that one. Okay. Losing Christine has been like loving Christine. It's changed the courses of our life forever. Losing Christine is like losing the sun. It encompasses you and swallows you whole. I would not wish it on my worst enemy. The prosecution has won this trial, but I assure you the family, friends, and loved ones of Christine and Melton have only lost. The stories are interesting. Thank you to those checking in on me. I had to go private due to receiving unaliving threats. I felt I needed to protect my family before it got worse. Thank you to everyone telling me to unalive myself. Every word made me feel stronger. <laughs> I feel like I'm going crazy. How can you, how can you do that? <laughs> how can you do that? Use a real life serial killer who killed people? To talk about your spicy book about a man who killed people and then get mad when you get death threats like i, I literally feel like i'm going insane H how do we make how does that make sense to the brain people who like dark romance are always it's just fiction it's just fictional it's not real and then go shocked pikachu face when the people who are in dark romance do something terrible like they like it for a reason. I genuinely don't understand how the brain doesn't go and think about why a kink is had when they have it or someone harmful has it. I don't understand how it has to be pointed out to you because it's so underthought that it's a muscle that's underworked. Just thinking about things. That muscle's underworked. And there's no shame in choosing to do so when you hadn't before. There's always time to be better. I wasn't always the best person. It's the fact that people are okay with this and worse don't realize that this is the truth. They just say, I'm right, you're wrong, snowflake, don't kink shame, and skip off into the darkness. You say that they're hurting people and they go, no, or womp womp, instead of, oh, I don't want that. How? I, I don't want to hurt people. And changing. Hey, friends. Friendly reminder that I used to enjoy these things, too. The majority of my life, I was into all of these things, and I defended them, too. I was these women, even though I was a kid. And then, I learned how it was hurting people, and then I changed. Because I don't want to hurt people. There's a reason why you like the things that you like and dislike the things that you dislike. Don't let yourself be fooled into thinking that there isn't. Doing something to cope with trauma, using a coping mechanism, does not mean that that thing is okay or good. We don't live in a vacuum. No artist works in a vacuum. We are all of us influenced by others. You can't make decisions like that in a vacuum. We aren't working in a vacuum and we are well aware of the consequences of our actions on others. The entire point of art made by humans is that it came from the human mind, our thoughts and feelings and emotions. That we create art because of those things. So it's actually impossible to separate an artist from their art because it comes from their mind for a reason. Are we saying that everyone would create the exact same type of art to the dot if we lived in a completely different world, a completely opposite world? And no, writing bad things doesn't make you a bad or harmful person. Writing bad things and wanting that to be good, getting off on it, liking that, that does. You're implying that art can only affect positively when you're saying that it can't or doesn't hurt someone. Because you say that it affects you positively, but if someone says the opposite, then they're wrong. And if you argue with those people long enough, they'll always show their true feelings of, well, you're just too sensitive then. Mm, we shouldn't have to censor art because of your fee-fees. You just want to consume things that you enjoy without thinking of the consequences and the harm on others, very selfishly. I like it, so I don't want to change because my feelings matter more than yours. If you cared for anyone else, you would think about why it's hurting other people, and if that means that it's hurting you too, and if it's worth continuing doing. You say that these book talk things don't hurt anyone, and yet there are women and girls who see these things, and it normalizes abuse to them. There are men and boys who see it and think that their behavior is justified. Do you know how confusing it can be 
for women and girls to post things online about loving abuse and then see women talk about how real life men do the same thing and are like, ew, that's awful. Do you know how confusing that can be? Like, no, I'm not defending abuse in any way, shape or form. You still did that. But do you understand how confusing that can be? I'm not saying that we are in charge of making them not abuse or whatever, but you still need to take responsibility for what you're putting out into the world and acknowledge that that is confusing and ask yourself if it's worth continuing doing when the consequences are what they are. You can say that it's fiction literally all you want and it will never change the fact that it does affect people and hurt people, as is the point of art. And that if you continue to perpetuate that harm that you're doing so willingly, and if you believe in caring for others in any kind of way, that makes you a bad person. Like, come on. This isn't about censoring art. This is about doing the one thing art is made for. Talking. This isn't about censoring art. This is about caring for people. You can create art as much as you want, whatever you want. That won't change the fact that it can hurt people and you have to choose whether or not to ignore it. Why should you care for harming others? Well, if you want to think selfishly, because you are others to everyone else. It goes back to what we learn as children. Would you like it if it happened to you? If you were them in their position, would you want them to have empathy and care for you or say, mm, fuck you, cry more? Being someone that complains about the state of the world and how the government doesn't care for us, and no one cares for each other, and that's why we're so divided and misogynistic, ableist, racist, all those things. And then acting like this when people tell you that your enjoyment of these things is harming them is hypocritical, selfish, and contradictory. Women in the dark romance community keep saying that the judgment of it is misogyny, that this is another case of women not being able to enjoy anything, because anything that a woman likes is cringe, not good, should be made fun of. While that is often true, as I've talked about in other videos, saying that anytime a woman enjoys something and something is said against that or, or they just get some kind of criticism against that is misogyny, is misogyny itself because it's not allowing women to be held responsible for their actions and how they affect others. Imagine how the family of Wade's victims would feel if they read a book where a woman is kidnapped, raped, um, assaulted, killed, driven over a thousand times so they look like spaghetti, and then they see people in the comments getting off on that. They see people being like, that's so hot. And all they can think about is their friend, their family, their daughter, their son, their person. But those people don't matter because this is just fiction and it can't hurt anything, right? Don't like, don't read. My art isn't for everyone. I am so overwhelmingly sick and tired of people being like, I'm a victim of this thing and I say it's okay. So that means it is now and forever okay. And no one can say anything about it as if they are the only victim whose opinion in this world matters. I am also a victim of grooming an essay, and I say everything that I just said as one. Why does my opinion not matter, but those who enjoy it do? Why do you as a victim matter more than the others? While finishing the script, I realized I'm going to do a video on Chapel Roan, and I started gathering information and evidence for that. And it's just making me think about how, no. I don't think that we're ever truly going to change or that we'll ever really change too much. Not saying this in a negative, like, doomer way or anything, but like in a, we have had access to history for a long time and what causes the downfall and pain in society. Uh, and we still continue to keep doing what we're doing and the likelihood according to past histories that we never really will cut away. I'm not saying that it's all our fault. The reason we are so selfish to begin with is because of our individualistic society forced upon us by capitalism and the higher ups in society so that we don't form community and stuff. I can only say so much before YouTube demonetizes me like the last video. It's not our fault that we're in these situations to begin with, but it is our fault when we are educated on it and we still choose to be this way. You talk about needing and wanting change and how no one is ever willing to get up and enact that change. But then you sit there and you do the exact same thing as those that you're condemning. Where is your sense? Kindness. Intelligence. The reason that we likely won't change is because of how we choose to keep being like this. It's all about choice. So just choose differently if you're worried that nothing will change and see if things do change. Because while history might say that we likely won't, that is no reason not to try because giving in only allows things to get worse. The whole point is choice. You can choose to be better or to be worse. It is all up to you. I'm not saying that you're not in a horrible situation, that you might be in a worse situation than others where things are harder, but what you choose will have an effect on the state of the world, on yourself and everyone else and the state of the world, all of us. So it is, at the end of the day, up to how we choose to be as people, as unfortunate as that might be. So just choose whatever you think is best and maybe stay a little bit open-minded because you can be wrong and we are all wrong all the time. That's the point of being human. I think I'm done.
it took a lot out of me to get the stuff for this video and just looking at all this stuff because um, just because I talk about these things or whatever doesn't mean that it doesn't really affect me. And I think about how maybe I need to not show, like visibly show how it affects me and my anger or whatever. But I think that that's so ridiculous. I go in between like I want people to listen, so maybe I shouldn't show that. But then also they need to see how it affects people. I don't know. It's a weird thing, you know. I need to go rest because I've had some new illnesses occurring and uh, they're starting to flare up and I don't feel too well. But if you like this video, press the like button. If you hated this video so much, press the like button because unfortunately for you, not for me. The dislike button doesn't exist for some reason. For the emojis put, um, ah, fuck. Um, uh, someone's screaming or the emoji closest to it. I'll put one if you can't find one. Um, and then like the emoji and then just the <sighs> emoji. Cause it's like, you know, <laughs> I haven't said this in a while, but I want to see if the thing glows or, or something. So if you like this video or any of my videos, press that subscribe button. Smash that subscribe button. What is the word? Hit that subscribe button. Whatever they, it wants me to say, because I want to see if it glows. Also, it would help me out, so that'd be cool. And of course, as always, free Palestine. And free Palestine means free everyone. Because what? We are not free until we are all free. You get, you get it, you get it. But do remember to be a good person and not a bad one, obviously. Because it is the one rule of this kingdom, the one one law of this kingdom, I really don't think it's that hard. It's okay. So even he wants to leave. And also remember that I will not see you, but you will see me next time. Of course, because again, that's how videos work. Why do you fight me every single time? Well, there's no reason to. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Apparently, apparently Stanzi or whatever, Stanzi, whatever, made an anti-Haitian joke. For what reason? I need to go look into this. Hold on. Well, that was horrific. Okay. And I just have to keep filming and continuing talking about these horrible things. Cool. I love talking about this shit.